HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Blaine Elkers. Blaine is a TEDx speaker and leading authority in personal implementation. As America's only chief results officer, he's a habit master with documented streaks of 1,677 days in a row. A top LinkedIn connector with over 26,000 first level connections. Blaine graduated from Purdue University and Stanford University Social Entrepreneurship Program. He is powered by Self Fluence, a personal development and training company, and he is excited to share ways that you can take control of your life, which is why he is here with us today. Thanks so much for joining me, Blaine. Diane, thank you so much for having me. I, you know, I've been on a lot of podcasts, but I was excited today to be with you. And then, you know, sometimes I I look up the podcast, I start listening to episodes, which I have done. You have remarkable stuff. If you have not hit the subscribe button, people, please go do that. But when I went there to the Apple or whatever, wherever it is, I think it said you had 450 episodes. So uh, one of the, you, you're doing a great job here and serving many people. So I'm excited to uh, to be on and, and you've done a great job up to this point in, in producing great content. Well, I, I have to say um, it is because of the guests who I have who share valuable information with the listeners. And I always learn something. So it's sort of a, you know, a double bonus uh, for me. <laughs> Uh, and and thank you for that. Um, we I think I am heading into my 14th year. So wow, yeah, I know, I know, sort of crazy. But as long as it's valuable to people, uh, we're gonna keep doing it. So and I have so many questions for you. Um, <laughs> All right, I uh, I think I'm going to start with because uh, it's something I'm fascinated by. Um, what is a 30 minute hour and uh, how can we have them? Ah, uh, yes, the 30 minute hour. So, the 30 minute hour is how to get an hour's worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. So, so literally, you are compressing time. Um, now, uh, I, I kind of figured out why I'm on the planet, uh, you know, a number of decades ago, and that is to help people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves, something I call self-fluence. So I, I founded a company called Self-Fluence uh, in 2009, but all the stuff that we teach, including the 30-minute hour, you know, everything you need is within reach. You're already doing it. 
And if you decide, not mandatory, but if you decide, you can master it. So any frameworks that I talk about today, like even this 30 minute hour, like you already know how to do it. Uh, you know, you're maybe, you know, you're not doing it enough maybe, but, but you already know how to do it. There's nothing new to learn. You don't have to download any special apps. You have everything you need within reach and, and you can do it. Now, I will say though, that this 30 minute hour framework is very powerful, Diane. So I have to make sure that it is used for good and not for evil. Uh, so for example, let's say that you and I had four 30 minute hours in a row. So what that means is we got four hours worth of work stuff done, um, you know, in just two hours. So that leaves us two guilt-free hours. Now, two guilt-free hours that you can't use for work. Now, the type A's like you and me and the business owners, mm -hmm. we're all like, oh, I'm going to get twice as much done. Okay, you can use some of that. But let's say you had two guilt-free hours that you can do something that's not work. So for me, my kids are out of the nest, but I would still probably reach out to them, connect with them if I had two guilt-free hours. I live in Phoenix. I like to hike, probably go out for a hike. I like my Peloton bike, maybe take a Peloton ride. And then working from home, I like the good old fashioned nap. So I might take a 15, 20 minute nap. Now that's that's Blaine's two guilt-free hours. What about you? What would you do with two guilt-free hours that you couldn't work? Okay. Um, well, I would definitely take a nap. So glad that you said that. Um, nice. and, and I would work out. I walk the dog um, if it wasn't sub-zero. <laughs> uh, and, and probably clean. Nice. So. Okay. Well, it, it's interesting too, uh, you know, some time with the dog there is that when I study, I, I study people in the last few weeks of life. And one of the reasons why I like to preface this framework is because they never say, I wish I would have worked more. You know, they never say that. They all say the same thing. And, and they say, I wish I had more memorable moments with the people I love. And, and that's that's the number one. Now, there's a, a secondary answer is I wish I had more impact with what I learned in life. Like I wish I would have taught it to more people or shared it uh, with more people or, or shared it in a bigger way. Um, yeah. but, but memorable moments with the people you love. So I say throw the schedule out the window if you get an opportunity for one of those memorable moments with, uh, with people you love. But ah, back to the framework. Okay. So now the 30 minute hour. Now there is, there's a day of the year it's people's most productive day of the year. Now, some people have it more than once a year, but on this day, you are three to 10 times more productive than your normal day, than your ordinary day, right? Uh, so that's 3x to 10x. Now, we're only looking for 2x, so this is going to be easy, actually. Uh, but, but do you know what day of the year is this where people are three to 10 times more productive than their normal day? My guess is going to be January 2nd. Okay, that's that's a good guess. And, and people are, you know, jumping into the new year and really enjoying it. But it's not like a day of the year. It's not like a certain day or it's not a day of the week. It's 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 a different kind of a day. Okay. Uh I I have no idea. <laughs> Diane's like, hey, I'm not supposed to be quizzed. I'm the host here. All right. So <laughs> the the answer is, and now this is going to be very intuitive for you and all the listeners. Okay. The, your most productive day of the year is actually the day before vacation. Ah. Uh -huh. Think back now. The day before vacation, people get three to ten times. Now I realized that was my most productive day of the year. And I said, okay, so I started studying that my own day before vacation, but I started studying other people on the day before vacation and everything, all the productivity gains came from just three things. So I, I took those three things and I put them into a little, a little acronym that's very easy to remember because it's PDF. Now, PDF, people say, email me the PDF. I'm going to go print out the PDF. And so it's an easy little phrase to remember. So when you think of think of 30 minute hour, think day before vacation, and then think PDF. Now PDF stands for plan, delegate, focus. So plan, delegate, focus. So let me kind of unpack each one of those so that you can have start having these 30 minute hours. So planning, it's interesting that day before vacation, <clears throat> people plan the whole day out. Like, like they're like, sometimes they plan it to the minute, you know, but they really plan it out. They do, I, I call it next day planning. Um, never let a day end without planning the next one is, is my little mantra. But 
you plan out that day. So you can have more productivity by just planning out your day, by, by making a schedule for the day. Now we know that the world is going to come in and that you're going to get pushed with urgency and clients and all kinds of stuff. That's okay. But, but when you start the day, if you have a plan, you're going to be way more productive, way more productive. So make a plan and fill out the plan. Maybe even put think time in there or exercise, relaxation. I've got a little slot for loose ends at the end of the day. They're always there. So I give them 30 minutes, but plan out the day. That's going to start to give you more productivity. The other interesting thing, now you might not do this every day, but on the day before vacation, people wake up 30 to 60 minutes earlier than a normal day. So if you, the first day, the first hour could be a 30 minute hour. If you just wake up 30 minutes extra earlier, right? You got it. So some days I will actually set the alarm clock and, and get up early and, and really have that kind of super productive day. So waking up early, that's another one. The other thing on planning is that you, on the day before vacation, you have like a real clear vision about like what has to get done and what's going to be actually the D, the delegated or deferred, uh, you know, so having a clear vision. So getting real clear about what really needs to be done. And uh, so, so Diane, have you heard of the 80-20 rule? Yes. Okay. So do you believe in it? Do you think it's real or do you think it's like some kind of a, a, a hocus pocus fable thing? No, I think it's real. Okay. All right. So most people, they think it's real and on the, but it, it but they wait they wait till the day before vacation to actually use it, right? So what that rule says is the 80-20 says that, you know, 20% of what you do produces 80% of your results, but then 80% of what you do only produces 20% of your results. So on the day before vacation, people are, they focus on the 20 and they oust the 80. So they focus on the 20. Like if I have a list of 10 things to do, now I, you know, on the day before vacation, I'm looking and saying, okay, I, these two are the most important. These other eight, they're just going to have to get pushed out. They're going to have to wait. Right. And so you're really good at that. So bring that back. I do that every day. When I look at my to-do list, I say, what can I push to what really has to be done today? What's important, but what can I push out? What can I defer or delegate to the next day? So that brings us to the D, which is delegate and defer. So you want to start pushing things out. Uh, you know, I, I call it proactive procrastination. I push a lot of stuff to tomorrow. Then the next, then tomorrow comes, I push it out again. But if I push that thing four or five days and it has no real deadline or urgency, it, it's something I really didn't need to do. I really didn't need to do it. So, so anyway, so you're really good at that. And on the day before vacation, you think who before do. So all day long, you're thinking, who could do this before I go do this, right? So who else could I get to do this? Because I'm leaving on vacation. I got to get all this stuff done. So I ask myself that, who before do, like, whatever I'm going to do, is there someone I could delegate this to? A lot of times, my wife, who also uh, works from home like I do, you know, she'll say, oh, I'm going to run these errands. Do you need anything done? Bam, 30 minute hour for me because, yes, can you go to the bank? Can you do this? Drop this at the post office. She can do a, a lot of that stuff. So I'm constantly thinking who before do, and then I'm deferring, I'm deferring the 80%. The, the I'm ousting the 80 and I'm focusing in on the 20. Now, personally, where I get my most 30 minute hours is from the F, which stands for focus. So on the day before vacation, you have this weird fierce focus that is like, like think of all the stuff you don't do. No chit chat, no long responses. The shiny objects don't look as shiny on the day before vacation. Uh, you know, there, there's no, you know, there's just not a lot of idleness to that day, right? So you want to bring that back in to your normal day. You want to bring, you know, that, that overscheduling and, and that focus. Um, do you like, uh, do you like James Bond movies? Um, I don't dislike them. I don't tend to watch them. Okay. So then I was going to give, ask you this trivia question, which is, uh, do you know the very first James Bond movie that came out in 1963? Do you happen to know what that is? Uh, no. So, so you did because that movie was called Dr. No. Now, the reason <laughs> I bring that up is because um, on the day before vacation, you become Dr. No, because uh, Blaine, can you do this? Blaine, can you do that? No, 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 no. Like, that's like my default. I'm going on vacation. I don't have any time for any of this. So you become Dr. No. So that's another way to gain more time back is to become Dr. No and make no is now my default response. Uh, you know, and sometimes you have to get little 
like a little head game with yourself. Like say, you know, I, I say, well, I've, I've got, to, I've got to check with my wife or I've got to check my schedule. I'm just trying to create a gap. You know, I want my default answer to be no. And the, the, the other reason why you want to become Dr. No is because that helps you avoid the opposite of the 30 minute hour, which is yes, you guessed it. It's the 90 minute hour. So the 90 minute hours when someone asks for an hour of your time and it takes 90 minutes, right? Or they ask for 10 minutes and it takes 30. So again, be, saying no is really, really, really key. Other thing when I study the day before vacation people, it's they, they tend to stay on schedule more, right? So having a schedule, I'm doing this at one o'clock, this at two o'clock, having a schedule, they tend to stay on it. And one of the tricks that happens um, on the day before vacation is they limit the time and specifically use timers or alarms. So I started doing that and I started getting much more productive, meaning let's say I'm going to, I got to do some internet, re internet research for an article I'm doing. I know when I open up that browser, I, I could be toast because I could get sucked right in. And so what I do is I tell Siri, set a timer for 30 minutes. Right. And now I'm, I'm, uh, the timer goes off. Then I consciously can make a decision to do more if I want to, but typically I don't. I'm like, okay, wrap this thing up. Or if I'm going to do email, I'm setting timers all day long to, to limit that, uh, you know, to, to limit that, that kind of exposure to that stuff. And then the last part of the focus, which is where I get my most 30 minute hours, is that people on the day before vacation, they all of a sudden become this like tasking master like the guru of tasking. And there's three types of tasking, single tasking, uh, multitasking, and batch tasking. Multitasking gets a bad rap, but we'll talk about that. But the single tasking is where I get my most. And single tasking is, it's a task that, that you do the best and you have to do it. It can only be you typically, but you just do that task in a very distraction-free, total concentration environment. For example, I write a lot of articles. And so I can get an hour's worth of article writing done in just 30 minutes if I will literally turn off my phone or go into airplane mode, one of the two, open my computer, maybe even shut the Wi-Fi down so I'm not distracted, but I'm opening up just the one screen I'm working on. It's just me and the screen and I'm typing my stuff uh, and, and I can get an hour's worth of stuff done if there's no interruptions, meaning the world, I have to, the outside world can't get to me. My door's closed. My wife knows I'm, I'm in single tasking mode. I can get a lot done in that single focus. Now in the beginning, when you're first doing it, you may have a little monkey mind, you know, um, and, and so to get rid of the monkey mind, just have a piece of paper with you and a pen. And when that thought comes, don't try to fight it. Take it, just write it down, right? So someone will be like, oh, I got to prepare for Diane's podcast. And that come, will come in my mind. I'll just write it down. And then I go right back to what I'm doing, literally seconds. So just throw it on the paper and then you come back to it after that single focus time. So that's that's where I get my most, uh, you know, 30 minute hours come from that. Now, multitasking, that's where you can do two things at the same time without compromising the quality of either one, right? So I can listen to this podcast, high quality while I'm driving and drive with high quality, like hands-free, you know, and, and I can listen and drive at the same time. I can exercise and listen to something, right? I can do some chores around the house, you know, while I'm listening to something. Um, so you're looking for those areas where you can get that synergy, right? But not lose the quality. Like I, I love exercise, but I love family time. So I taught the family how to play tennis. So we go out for 30 minutes of tennis. Well, that's a 30 minute workout and 30 minutes of family time. So I got hours worth of stuff done in just 30 minutes. So you look for those synergies uh, like that. That's the multitasking. And then the last one is batch tasking, which is, you, you know, this one, you just batch things together, right? Uh, day before vacation, you got three errands. You're not going to run an errand, come home, run an errand, come on. No, you batch them all together, go do them together. And you're much more efficient that way. Same thing with computer work, same thing with phone calls, batch Batch that stuff. Um, you know, I even like to batch interruptions, right? You, well, for example, let's say you you uh, you go into your company and you say, look, uh, from nine to eleven, I'm going to be in single tasking mode in the office, door shut, don't come in here unless there's a fire. But at eleven, when I emerge, all those questions you want to ask me for the last two hours, we're going to go twenty minutes. Ask me anything you want, right? So you just batched all those interruptions, like almost into a little office hours uh, uh, method there. So that's, that's the big thing. So think 30 minute hour, think day before vacation mode, you've already done it, you know how to do it. Uh, and then think plan, delegate, focus. And the overarching thing that happens on the day before vacation is you release your inner perfectionist. 
And that's a big, so, so done is better than perfect. You release the inner perfectionist and, you know, you, you just let yourself and let others get things done. You know, stuff's not done as good as you could do it, but it's done, right? Or, or at least there's progress on it. So anyway, there you have it. I don't know. That might've been a little more than you wanted, but when I get going on that, I get kind of excited. The average person experiences up to 10,000 marketing efforts each day. Those ideas are called from millions of possibilities. The CMO Confidential Podcast takes you behind the scenes to learn about the decisions, drama, politics, and glory that go with one of the most scrutinized jobs in the executive suite, the Chief Marketing Officer. Guests from all over the business world join Mike Linton, a five-time CMO, to share stories about what it's really like in the marketing universe. Hey there. Are you interested in building your brand? whether it's personal, startup, or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Mentor Dialogue, come join me, Mentor Dial, as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Mentor Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy, where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change. Well, you do. And I want to go back to some, first of all, thank you so much for that information. I, I found that tremendously valuable. Um, but I want you to go back to something that I, was just key for me. And that is um, the deferring. Because what I thought I heard you say was that you have like no problem deferring something. And after you've deferred it a couple of times, you look at it, to, you know, pretty much determine, is this even something that is worthwhile for me to do? Right. I find that liberating um, and, and really interesting. Um, and I, so I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about like what kinds of th things are, it, it is that does that include for you yeah yeah and it, it is very liberating and and when you start to live in the 20 focusing on the 20 ousting the 80 right you realize you know 80 percent, or, or let's say you just want to say 50 percent. 50 percent of what you do isn't producing results right and and so you begin to liberate yourself knowing that less you know, less but better, right? Less but better. And so you start to look at things and, and what you're going to do and how your day is going to run. And, and I like to say, well, let's say instead of eight hours to work today, I only had one or two hours. Like, what would I do? Like, what's the most important stuff to do? And really start there. And I like to push everything out to the next day. And that opens up pockets for me later in the day too, like islands of, of kind of valuable time that I can spend. And sometimes a really high valuable priority thing comes in in the middle of my day, right? That could be like my daughter might say, she lives close by. She might say, dad, you want to go hiking? Uh, I'm there, drop everything because I hardly see her. You know, um, she's a, a medical doctor and I, and I hardly get to see her. So if she says, let's do something, I'm there for the magical moments with people I love. So, so I'm looking to create those. But the things that do it, yeah, it's it's like things that um, like things that I want to do, but they're not that important, right? So, for example, you know, um, you, you know, I, I want to update the way I do my vitamins, right? And so it's something I want to do. Uh, you, you know, but I already I am taking some vitamins, but I want to update them and it's a project, but it, it, it got pushed out three, four or five days. And then I just took it off the list for now. Or you can put it if you're worried about that, uh, you, you can put it on an, uh, like a master list that you, you know, look at periodically. But I, to be honest, I, I don't really look at my that list very often. <laughs> uh, but it's those things like that, or it could be following up with a low priority kind of a, a, a person or someone puts some requests on my time and, it, and, it, and it's a follow up item, you know, so I'm, I'm just I'm pushing, uh, you know, pushing that that stuff out, you know, to to another day. And a lot of times things will solve themselves, right? If it's not like mission critical or client focused, client centered, that something you have to do, a lot of that stuff, you know, will will kind of solve itself. Um, so I I found that to be liberating. And and really, I moved from I used to be like a day behind on everything, and then I got to where I was just behind. Then I was caught up. Then I was ahead, and now like I'm a day ahead. So except maybe like the day after vacation, then I'm, I'm usually not ahead there. But it takes me a few days to get back to being ahead. 
but it's almost like a bathtub. And, you know, there's the spigot where the water comes in and you do have to slow that down. You know, you can, you know, you can make a bigger drain at the bottom and try to process more. But I also found that Dr. No, if you can be Dr. No and stop the inflow of stuff into your bathtub, you know, then it stops overflowing. It becomes more manageable, um, you know, right. and, and then you kind of can move on from there. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. And, and I, I'm glad I asked the question about um, the deferring and asked you for examples, because I like this idea that um, it's okay to do that kind of thing. I think there's a lot of people who it really bothers them that they keep putting off things and, but they, but what they don't do is look at it and go, okay, hang on a second. Is this really a thing? Is is this real? Or, or do I just need to let it go? So that that's a great um, example and opportunity for people to listen to that and go, okay, I get, it is okay. I, I, I can do this kind of thing. So. Yeah, I think that's, and, and what are the opportunity costs, right? So, so it's the, yeah. you know, I'm dropping the smaller thing for the bigger. Yes. That's yeah. why like, when I have a big goal, like a big thing I'm working on, like, it's easy for me to say no to people because I have this big thing. And, right. and if they ask me about it, I'm working on this big project or this big family thing. It could be a personal thing, you know? Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm working on that right now. And so, so now's not, not a great time. Um, but a, a lot of times, you know, the whole world can seem urgent, right? So there is, uh, yeah. sometimes you got to create a little space and, uh, and sometimes your body just gets sick and then gives you three or four days of not working. Right? Yeah. But, but, you know, you made it through those days, right? Or, you know, the emergency for the family, right? You made it through. So I'm saying, bring that day before vacation, bring some of that urgency back in to push the world, you know, out a little bit and, and then start to get, start to learn, like, what is the 20? Like, you know, I'm always asking myself, you know, was that one of the 20 or it wasn't? Ah, no, nah, it wasn't. Dang. I wish, I wish I didn't do that. But, but you learn, right? You look back and you learn yeah. and then you get better. Like you, you get better at making the decisions. So now it's, it's easier, you know, I, I have a saying, you know, why build a road south when you're headed north? Yeah. And so I've said enough around my kids and my wife, <clears throat> I'll say, oh, you know, honey, I think I'm going to go do this. She just goes road south. Like she's got to say that road <laughs> south. You're, you're, you're out. You're, that's not right. You know, she's, yeah. and she's right. She's right every time, uh, you know, so um, anyway, it, you know, you just have to start to put some of that frameworks like that in so that you realize but now if you have no roads north right if you're if you don't know where you're going and you yeah. don't have a big project or something oh yeah then you're gonna you're gonna be pulled south east west all over the place right right exactly so it's it feels like it's um superimposing on yourself this feeling of it's the day before vacation because it keeps you in that mindset of being doctor now and focusing on the high priority things and delegating or deferring the others. Right. Right. And, and that fierce focus of the day before vacation, Yeah, you know, um, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll tell people I'm in the day before vacation mode, you know, my, and my wife and kids, they know exactly what that means that, um, you know, high productivity, but some people don't, they say, well, where are you going? I'm like, well, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just acting like, it's <laughs> day before vacation. And they're like, Oh, okay. I get that. And everyone can relate to that because yeah. really that was one of their most productive days of the year. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I get it. All right. So now talk to me about the 21 second habit and how we create them. What are they? And how do we create them? Yes, a good question. So similarly, you know, this is another self-fluence, you know, kind of framework. You know, this is something, everything you need is within reach. You're already doing it and you can master it. Like I'll ask you, Diane, have you brushed your teeth in the last 24 hours? Oh yeah. Okay. How long have you had that habit of brushing your teeth? Oh my God, since I was a kid. Okay, so decades, we're not going to say how many decades yeah. you and I have on the planet, but it's decades. So yeah. the first thing everyone, all the listeners, you have to realize is you are a habit master. Like you know, you're not, you're you're created by habits. Your life is really kind of created by the habits you you let your body keep uh, and your mind keep, right? But we're habit creatures of habit, and we're already masters at, at it. So the way I discovered 21 second habits is how to create a new habit in 21 seconds, not 21 days. Now neurologically, neurologically, it takes about 21 days for neurons to start to wire together and insulate. And it takes 63 days to actually hardwire in your brain a, a, a new habit. But we're going to hack all that <clears throat> so you can do it in 21 seconds. Now, the way I discovered this was my wife, Beth, 
Unfortunately, I'm glad this is past tense, she used to have nearly daily migraine headaches. Oof. So the doctor said, we couldn't figure it out. And the doctor said, look, here's this headache log. And you got to fill this thing out. Like, you know, what did you eat? What's the weather? What's the barometric pressure? What do you think the triggers were? You know, and so she she had this log and she could only do it for like two days, maybe three at the most. Then she would lose it and, and she'd get frustrated. Then she'd have another migraine. Then I'd ask her about it. Where's the log? Oh man, it was bad. Then one night I'm watching her brush her teeth. And, I, and she's like one of these like dentists recommended two minutes in the morning, two minutes at night. And I said, honey, get, let, let's put the headache log underneath the toothbrush. And this is the first key to the 21 second habits is habit linking. So the way you kind of hack it is you link it to a habit that you're already a habit master at that requires no willpower. So she doesn't need any willpower to brush her teeth. So she put, so every time she's got two minutes in the evening and two minutes in the morning, she fills out the headache log. And she went from can't do it for two or three days to 90 days in a row. Uh, and then you, the, the proud face she had when she went back to the doctor with that thing all filled out for 90 days, I'll never forget that. It was awesome. Um, but anyway, now she has a migraine once every couple of months. So it's much, much wow. uh, more in, in control. So, so habit linking. So figuring out there's all these things you link to, right, that you can link to that you're already a habit master at. Now, for me, you mentioned one of my streaks earlier is I said, okay, let me test this for myself. I've got two habits that I want to start to do every day. One was this Bible app. I wanted to do this Bible app. And then I wanted to take a mind shower. So I realized that that my head trash is like there, just like I take a physical shower, wash my body, great. Why don't I wash my mind out? All the head trash from the news and social media and my, my well-meaning family and friends who are like, what do you mean you work from home as a results officer? What, what is that? What do you do? Like all this head trash and my own self-doubt, I wanted to wash that out every day. So what I did is I said, okay, Blaine, what do you do every morning? No willpower required. And you know what? It's, it's I open my smartphone. Like, I don't have to, that, that's going to happen. It happens every morning. No willpower card. I open my smartphone. So I took my smartphone, Apple, uh, iPhone, and I moved all the apps off the home screen. I just put two apps there, Bible app and an app called Headspace. That's one of the things I use for the mind shower. Um, and I put those there and I just have it linked to the opening. When I open my phone for the first time, I have to do those two apps before I'm allowed to touch anything else on the phone. Now, this is where you get the second key. So key number one is habit linking. Key number two is what's called urge surfing. So I need to surf an urge to get me to have the energy and the focus to do the new habit. And so when I open my phone at the bottom, I see my text messages and I always get text messages in the middle of the night because my son is in Denmark. Uh, and so I have text messages and emails and news and social media and the, what's happening in the world and what orders came in and the bank accounts and all that stuff that I really have an urge to want to check. So I surf that urge into getting me to do those two habits. Now, I, I like a 10 minute mind shower, but if I'm short on time, I can do a two or three minute, but I'm, but I'm not going to miss. And those apps, what I love is those apps record your streaks, right? So um, mm. today was day 1,736 days in a row that I've opened up the phone and surfed the urge and did that, you know, did that, uh, did that new habit. So, so habit linking key and then urge surfing. Like in my wife's case, she could not go to bed with that gritty feeling on her teeth. Right. right. And so, and she has to fill out the log to brush her teeth. She has to fill out the log. So she surfed that, that urge in that case. And then the last one, last key to the 21 second habit is leverage. So getting leverage on yourself works both the carrot and the stick, and then also streaks or, and accountability. But, but the carrot works like we say, Hey, if I do this habit for a week, I'm going to buy this book I wanted to buy. Right. Giving yourself a little reward psychologically helps. Um, pain also works the stick, right? So if you don't do the habit for seven days, you have to pay a penalty. Typically spouses like to come up with those penalties and they enjoy it when, when you don't make it, uh, all kinds of chores. My wife will say, you know, you have to wash the garbage cans, which she knows I hate to wash the outside garbage cans. And then I know if she really wants me to do it, she says, if you don't do that, you have to wash the neighbor's garbage cans on the side where if you touch his stuff, he's coming after you. So then, the, you know, she knows I'm going to get it done. But 
in any case, leverage like a, a carrot stick or streak psychologically. Once you get like two, three, four days in a row, you don't want to break the streak. It becomes very powerful or don't break the chain, some people say. Uh, and then accountability. If you have an accountability partner and you're accountable to someone other than yourself, that also helps uh, with, with the leverage. So it's habit linking, right? Take your new habit, link it to an existing habit, serve some kind of an urge. And then if you can put some leverage on yourself. Wow. Okay. I like all that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, we we're talking about next day planning. <clears throat> I had one client, she wasn't doing the next day planning. And I said, look, and that's like getting on an airplane with no pilot. I mean, you, you, you're, you're, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I said, what do you do first thing in the morning? No willpower required. She goes, I make a cup of coffee. I said, you have one of those fancy machines that grinds the beans and, and you can really smell the coffee being made and the sounds and all this goes. Yeah. I said, great. Take a pad of paper and a pen, put it on the top of the coffee machine, uh, and, and you can make the coffee, you can smell the coffee, get yourself all worked up to have the coffee, but you can't drink the coffee to at least you make some plan for the day. Now, if it's just, hey, here are the top three things I'm going to do, that's fine, but you got to start writing the plan yeah. before you drink the coffee. And now, boom, she's got it because she's got the linking and, and the urge surfing. Interesting. I'm going to have to give that more thought and figure out what I can link. So. Yeah, figure out and, and start small, like exercise, mm. you know, start with a small habit, you know, um, you know, resistance kind of low, you know, and, and then and then kind of, uh, yeah, build up from there. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. Well, my gosh, Blaine, I, I have so many more questions, but I do not have so much more time. So <laughs> I truly value this conversation. And I would love it if you would tell the listeners how they can learn more, how they can find you, you know, all of those things. And I'll make sure I get them into the show notes as well. Yeah, sure. The easiest thing is just, I, I did a TEDx talk about this concept of Waitaba. What you think about, you bring about, and I showed people how to kind of, whatever you want to bring about in your life, how to program your subconscious mind, like effortlessly about a hundred times a day. So, so I have that. You just go to blainetedx.com. So B L A I N E T E D X.com. You can opt in and get that. Then we'll be connected. You'll have my email. And if I can serve you in any way, I'm ha happy to do it. Excellent. Like I said, I will make sure that that is in the show notes. So Boy, thank you so much. I think this was tremendously valuable. Uh, and uh, listeners, thank you. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Hey there, are you interested in building your brand, whether it's personal, startup or corporate, and developing your leadership skills? On Minter Dialogue, come join me, Minter Dial, as I interview some of the world's most interesting personalities, entrepreneurs, business people, and authors. I'm proud that this podcast, which is available through all your favorite podcast services, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Check out the Minter Dialogue show on leadership, transformation, and brand strategy, where you'll get stimulating conversations that elevate your energy and spark change.